today I'm going to make cushions for this chair that I'm sitting on, as well as this uh, identical chair sitting next to me. Um, and I'm going to use this fabric. So I got it from Sarah Parker Textiles, a company based in Georgia. And they do screen print patterns on organic base cloths. And this is a remnant, so it's not like this, like a perfect piece of fabric. The bottom half does not have the print on it. And so what I'm going to do is use the, so the printed side as the top part of the cushion and then this unprinted side as the bottom part of the cushion. and a half by 13 and a half. I'm gonna line this up with the edge. So this is the imperfect way to do this when you don't have a cutting mat and you don't have a ruler and you're just trusting that you're doing this square and straight. This is supposed to be three and a half inches longer than it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I'm gonna do is just cut out more because I'm pretty sure I still have enough and use this for something else. since I was struggling cutting out this fabric. Um, and since then, I've actually bought a rotary cutter and a cutting mat to help me um, cut squares and rectangles a little easier. Also, since then, I finished one of the cushions. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. The cushions um, I'm making similar to how I made the lavender pillows. Um, but I'll be stuffing it with wool batting instead of lavender. And then I'll also be tufting it like I did the mattress. So, you know. This is like a combination between making the little lavender pillows and the huge mattress. <laughs> what I need to do now is to fold over the top of each fabric, which will help with the uh, to do the blind stitch a few steps from now. for the best part.
And it's time to uh, get out the wool batting. I want the wool batting to be just, I guess just a little bit smaller than the cushion so it can slide in there. So this is four layers. One, two, three, four. Now I just need to cut one more layer. This will be used for something else eventually. So I do need to cut this down. a little bit scrunched up in here but the tufting I think will actually help. To sew up um, the the top part I need to do a blind stitch so you don't see the stitches on the top. It's a little more awkward with the wool stuffing so I, I feel like I'm not doing it in the best way but I'm doing it in a way. My corners are just like a little bit sloppy. I'm actually gonna put a few more stitches in right here. You know, I don't think it's like a bad look to have stitches showing. second time making this cushion. The first time I ran into a few problems that I was like, okay, I know how to do it better this time. And then this time I ran into some different problems, <laughs> which resulted in this funky corner, which, you know, it's just beautiful in its own way. It's like the back is just crawling around. It's like a little hand coming to say hello. <laughs> but this corner is also going to have its own little specialness. This might be the best way to do it. And just let that be there and sew that up. So I have a little bit of the back coming to the front and then a little bit of the front coming to the back. <laughs> I did not do when I made the mattress was mark where I was going to tuft then I can see where I need it to come in and out So it'll be 
doing is making little X's on the front. It is much easier to tuft this little cushion than it was to tuft the mattress. <laughs> Tufting the mattress was like, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done. because today's been so stressful, but I'm glad that I finished both of these because it really makes these chairs more comfortable. This one didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to, but that's fine. It's a, a work of art in its own way and still serves its function, so I would say success. But if you have any questions for me or if you have any recommendations, uh, let me know below and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more of these because I have lots of things to make so come along with me if you'd like.